So in order for us to learn about the electron cloud, we first need to learn about something called electromagnetic radiation. So this video in PowerPoint goes along with an organizer that you have by the same name. Um, so if you would find that organizer and um, use it to help you take some notes on this video in PowerPoint. So what is electromagnetic radiation? Basically, you can whittle it down to the fact that it is light energy. It is a way that um, we can transfer energy from one place to another via what we refer to as light. So the sun delivers energy to the earth by the way of electromagnetic radiation. Um, and so electromagnetic radiation has all the wave properties that you learned in about in physics. Um, it has an energy associated with it. Uh, that energy unit um, we use is joules in chemistry. Uh, it has an ap amplitude, the maximum height above the center line. It has a wavelength, we give the variable lambda to, which is the distance between waves. And it has a frequency, um, given the Greek letter nu, which is the number of waves per second. Uh, it also travels at the speed of light in a vacuum. If you don't have, so a vacuum is the absence of anything, right? So there's no air or anything in there. If you don't have a vacuum, the speed of light slows a little bit, but not enough for us to detect it um, on our own. We would need some sort of device to be able to measure that slowdown. So typical picture of a wave, we've got the wavelength from peak to peak. The amplitude is how tall the peak is. Um, the direction of motion is what we're going to use to measure the frequency. So if I put a little line here, how many waves are going to pass a line in a given amount of, of time? It depends on the wavelength. So if the wavelength is really spread out, you get fewer waves. If the wavelengths are really tight together, you get a higher frequency. So now think about that. What's the relationship between wavelength and frequency then? As the wave gets bigger, fewer waves will pass a given point. So it's an inverse relationship. We're going to take a look at that uh, a little bit later. All right, so where does electromagnetic radiation come from? Um, it's really a result of moving charged particles. Uh, anything that has charge and is moving, obviously, is going to has the potential to produce electromagnetic radiation. Um, and scientists have observed, have observed that this electromagnetic radiation has what we refer to as a kind of duality. Because not only does it act like a wave, it also acts like a particle. So back in bio, you talked about photons of light um, being used for photosynthesis. Well, that's the particle part. So even though electromagnetic radiation travels through space as a wave, with a wavelength and an amplitude and so forth, it also acts like it's a stream of particles, a little packet of particles. Um, so oftentimes we talk about you need to have a certain quantity of energy in order to accomplish a certain task. That's when we talk about electromagnetic radiation being a, a, a photon or having a, a particle property. In chemistry, we don't really dwell on the photon part too much. It's mostly the wave property that we're worried about. So here you have an example of the radiation, the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. Um, the center area is what I want to direct your attention to first. Notice we've got radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. Um, so all of these are different types of electromagnetic radiation. How do they differ? Well, they differ by their wavelength, their frequency, and their energy. So radio waves are the longest, and then you go through the entire spectrum, and then you get to gamma rays, which are the shortest. But remember what we said about frequency? Big wavelength, small frequency. Okay, so here's the low frequency, here's the high frequency, and notice the third thing, energy. Big waves have little energy associated with them. Um, small waves have high energy associated with them. So we're going to get into that quantitative relationship soon, but I just wanted to point that out to you. 
Um, so I do want you to know the order of electromagnetic radiation. So I want you to know that radio waves are the longest, visible is in between infrared and ultraviolet and so forth. So make sure that you get a feel for what the spectrum is, um, whether or not you know sources of electromagnetic radiation, not too worried about. Um, this visually gives you a, an idea of the size of the wavelength we're talking about. Again, I'm not too worried about it. Um, I just want you to know the order of the different types of electromagnetic radiation. Um, so let's talk about each of those a little bit. Um, so we're going from high energy to low energy here. So short waves to, to big waves. Gamma rays have the highest energy, smallest wavelength. Um, they actually are generated during nuclear processes. Um, so gamma rays will be given off if you drop an atomic bomb or you set off an atomic bomb, uh, for example. Um, so gamma rays have the highest energy. There's not a lot of things uh, that will stop a gamma ray, a very thick piece of concrete, a very thick piece of lead can stop a gamma ray because it's very dense. Um, or the, the uh, shield is very dense, uh, that has to be dense to stop a gamma ray. Um, so your body cannot. Gamma rays can go straight through your body, which can be a problem because as it goes through your body, it could do damage because of the high energy. But there's nothing you can do to stop it. You just need to avoid them. Um, X-rays, next most uh, energy. Um, we all think about x-rays in terms of checking out do i have a broken bone i'm going to go for an x-ray to see if i have a broken bone um, x-rays are good at passing through soft tissue but your bones are a little more dense and x-rays can't pass through your bones um, so gamma rays can pass through anything x-rays can only pass through the soft tissue areas so we use x-rays to help us see if we have any broken bones uh, we continue to decrease in energy. Uh, you get to ultraviolet. Now, ultraviolet, lower in energy, but still kind of dangerous because think about where you've heard of ultraviolet before. Um, ultraviolet rays are associated with sun, uh, the sun and skin cancer and skin and sun damage and so forth. So now we're getting to a, a wave of energy that can't get through the body, can't penetrate the body, can only penetrate a few layers of skin, uh, but it can do some damage to that those few layers of skin. So that's where you hear about skin cancer. You never hear of ultraviolet light causing stomach cancer or bone cancer because ultraviolet light doesn't have enough energy to, to penetrate um, through more than a few layers of your skin. Visible light next to ultraviolet light. Uh, hopefully we don't really have to talk about that. Um, that's how we see. Um, then next lowest energy, you've got infrared light. Take note of what's on either side of visible. Ultraviolet and infrared, that's going to help us remember the, the visible spectrum of light as well. Um, infrared is often called heat light. It's what you use if you have some sort of cold-blooded creature, uh, a frog or a toad or something, um, a snake. Uh, they need a heat lamp in order for them to get enough energy to, to function appropriately. Um, so infrared lamps are, are often referred to as heat lamps. Microwaves um, and radio waves are the two things that have the longest wavelengths. Um, microwaves, uh, you saw on the last slide, um, microwaves are also what we refer to as radar, um, as well as the microwave ovens that you have in your kitchens. Cool thing about microwaves, they actually, the frequency of a microwave um, is similar to the frequency of water vibrations. And so that's actually how microwaves cook food. They cause water molecules to vibrate more and when you have more motion you increase the temperature and then there your food cooks so that's how microwaves are actually work which is kind of cool um and radio waves longest waves i don't think we don't need to talk about those i think you pretty know uh know pretty well, well what they are so let's look at the visible light spectrum a little bit um our eyes are able to detect a really really small range of of wavelengths 
400 to 700 nanometers is pretty much what the visible range are for our light is, um, or our vision. And if you remember, you've got this rainbow of colors then, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. This one says cyan, blue, violet, but probably when you were little, you remembered, you learned it as Roy G. Biv. Um, so yeah, I want you to remember the order of Wavelengths, the order of energy. So notice that the red waves have the biggest wavelength, which means they have the smallest frequency. Um, red is right next to infrared. Violet is going to be right next to ultraviolet. Short wave, high energy ultraviolet next to short wave, high energy violet versus red. So that's how you can kind of tell those two things apart. Um, all right, so why do we see color? So we see white objects, we see black objects, we see colored objects. Why do you see something that's white? Hopefully you remember from freshman physics that if you see something white, really you're seeing um, all of the colors of the rainbow being given off or reflected to your eyes. So if you see white, that's all colors of the rainbow, as opposed to black is then the absence of color. Um, things appear black because the object, the t-shirt or the car or whatever you're looking at, is absorbing all of the wavelengths of color and reflecting nothing to your eye. So your eye is picking up nothing, which is why it looks black. Um, a colored object looks colored because it's absorbing most colors and reflecting only the color that you see to your eyes. So a red shirt appears red. Uh, because it's not absorbing red wavelengths, it's absorbing everything else, but it's reflecting the red wavelengths back to your eyes. So that's how you see color. Um, so I think I'm going to pause this here and go to a second video. I'm running out of time. So we'll talk about these different forms of electromagnetic radiation and why some are dangerous and why some aren't um, in the second half of this video.